Hey YouTubers, this is Jacques Gaines, and I am here to talk to the beginners who want to work in Photoshop on portrait editing. We're going to talk about five essential tools that they need to know when they start editing their portraits. Hey you guys, before I start, I just want to tell you that if you are an expert portrait photographer and you've been portrait editing in Photoshop for years, this is probably not the video for you. But if you're a beginner, the first thing that goes through your mind is where do I start? What do I do? And this video is about five tools that if you master those five tools, your portraits are going to go up a level and you're going to up your Photoshop portrait editing game. So without further ado, let's get into it right away. Most amateur photographers think of the crop tool as a Photoshop tool to get rid of unwanted parts of the initial photo that was taken. But pay attention to the way Adobe defines the crop tool. The crop tool removes distractive background elements to create a focus on your desired object in the image. So the real definition of the crop tool is the tool by which the photographer decides what the observer will see. Never underestimate the utility and the effectiveness of just getting a good crop in. Crop can be used to make sure that the message comes across. Don't be afraid when you crop. Sometimes you can only use 10% of the image that you took to communicate what you want to say. In my journey learning about Photoshop portrait editing, I've always been amazed how dodge and burn can change a portrait. It took me years to learn this. Dodging and burning is like selectively darkening or brightening parts of your image. Now there's about a million ways to dodge and burn, but I would suggest to everybody to go to the dodge and burn tools that are in the Photoshop editing palette. Use these and use them as quick as you can because you're gonna find out that it can really change your photo. The dodge tool brightens, the burn tool darkens. Now with experience, you're gonna find out which parts of the portrait you want to darken and brighten to get more drama and effect. For dodge, you go eye whites, hair highlights, bridge of the lip, reflection in the eye, also referred to as the catch light. And it's always kind of fun to brighten jewelry and accessories. For burn, you go for the jawbone, mascara and eyeshadow, hair where there are no highlights, under the chin and at the neck. Start with those and then you can see what you want to do because there are no rules. You can dodge and burn whatever you like. Eyes are the key. The focus of any portrait will always be the eyes. Whether they are closed or open, always zoom in on your photo in a Photoshop project and take the time to enhance the eyes. We benefit most by using the sharpen tool. Use this tool to sharpen the iris. Now this might sound bizarre because the iris is such a small part of the portrait, but the effect is striking. Browse Instagram and look up some of your favorite portraits. There's a 95% chance that the eyes have been sharpened. So make sure you learn the sharpen tool. The healing brush essentially takes a sample of a flawless part of a portrait and places it in a spot where there's an imperfection. So you can guess that the healing brush is there to take away skin blemishes, age spots, and scars. Now the reason why this tool is so intimidating at times is that there are a lot of parameters and you can play with them. There's sample versus pattern modes, different blend modes, and a thing called diffusion. But for beginners, I strongly suggest you use the default healing brush settings while learning it. And when you want to go deeper and more in depth, you just go into the Photoshop help to go to the next level. Now, no matter what portrait you take, you need to draw attention to the subject. There are so many ways to do this, but the two easiest ways where you get the most bang for your buck is with vignetting and blurring. 
Now, although this is more of a trick, these two techniques help to get the most out of your portrait photo. Learn how to use what's called iris blur or tilt shift blur. They are in the filter drop down menu under blur gallery. So experiment with iris blur and tilt shift and you will see which one you prefer. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions or any tools you think that are really, really essential, please share them in the comments. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing.